We've already covered the factions of American conservatism, so today Carson and I are back to break down and explain the factions of American liberalism, or rather, the American left wing. The United States is a very large country both in geographic size and population. It's no surprise then that across the country you'll find a diverse assortment of needs, beliefs, and lifestyles, creating a multitude of different political interests and views. However, the United States has historically functioned on a two-party system, with the two modern parties of the Democrats and Republicans coming to stand for the broad ideologies of liberalism and conservatism respectively. Within these parties and ideologies are specific sub-factions with distinct and sometimes opposing interests, but which have been brought together by a unifying goal or goals under the umbrella titles of conservatives and liberals, the right and the left. Just as for our video on the factions of the American right, I'll begin by covering the mainstream factions of the American left. These are factions characterized by a noteworthy holding of public offices and dominance of left media, allowing them to shape and dominate the agenda and direction of the left wing. The first of these factions are... Social liberals, at one point referred to as the New Left, are a faction of the left who owe their origins to the post-Second Great War idealism of the late 1950s and the subsequent counterculture movement of the 60s and 70s. This faction draws from both classically liberal positions of individual freedom and tolerance, as well as from anti-normative and anti-authority critical theory. Having rejected the authoritarian old left, as well as what are considered more repressive aspects of liberal Western culture, oftentimes including capitalism itself, in favor of a more open, egalitarian, and free society. As you might imagine, this faction's prime interest lies in social policies, particularly those in relation to supporting and propping up marginal groups seen as oppressed from a perspective of intersectionality. That is, a hierarchy of factors which contribute to privilege or lack thereof, leading social liberals to align with and in some cases merge with movements like feminism, LGBT activism, and minority empowerment, all under the purpose of promoting a more fair and equal society. Consequently, this also turns social liberals against a perceived cultural and political establishment which is generally wealthy, straight, white, male, or some combination of these factors. Social liberals generally favor a position of non-interventionist pacifism, both from a position of non-aggression and from the stance that interventionist wars are imperialist and oppressive to foreign populations, Though this position can change if interventionism is perceived as preventing imperialism, as seen in the strong social liberal support for Ukraine against Russia in the Russia-Ukrainian conflict. This faction supports the concept of a caretaking government and social safety nets which protect and provide for the public need, and that such services should be funded by taxing the most wealthy or privileged of the population. As per their opposition to authority, social liberals tend to oppose centralized power in favor of participatory or direct democracy. This decentralized but engaged approach makes social liberals highly involved in political activism and allows them to maintain a significant presence within local governments and academia, making them a large and powerful faction, though one which is gradually being sidelined by less idealistic and more aggressive left-wing factions. Some key figures of this faction include Gavin Newsom, Pete Buttigieg, and Jay Inslee. The progressive left as a faction draws upon a mixture of ideologies derived from both the previously mentioned social liberals, but also FDR-era New Deal policies and democratic socialism, not shying away from a more centralized and statist approach to government. Far more economically focused and federally interventionist in their approach to implementation of policy than the decentralized social liberals, progressives come from a position similar to that of the new right in that they feel that common American citizens and younger generations especially are exploited and taken advantage of by moneyed multinational interests. This leads the faction to support the use of government power to both regulate business and provide for the public. Rather than invest in a caretaking government, progressives believe in using government power to provide what are considered modern essentials, including universal health care, free college education, and a standard living wage in place of the minimum wage. This federally interventionist stance extends to using federal power to create various public works to modernize the country, chiefly infrastructure expansion and development, as well as replacement of fossil fuels with alternative energies. This faction has a growing presence among youth populations, especially the college-educated who have been left disillusioned and disenchanted by the economic and social state of a country they feel has failed to put its citizens first. Understandably, the sense of a need to focus on domestic issues has made progressives less internationalist than their peers, but progressive politicians have shown support of internationalism in relation to climate and environmental issues especially. Ideological clashes have occurred over conflicting positions in favor of immigration and domestic labor, with it possible the faction will shift toward a more nativist position in the near future as immigration becomes a greater hindrance on employment prospects for younger generations, and the idealist immigration stance of these social liberals is seen as untenable in the long term. Despite calls from some progressives to do away with immigrations and customs enforcement, an increased focus on the American citizenry would demand a tightening of immigration flow. 
That being said, progressives do still uphold a firm belief in a need for social justice for marginal and minority groups, generally with a greater emphasis upon racial minority groups, which again causes this faction internal tension as it attempts to balance a strong pro-immigrant position with a growing nativist economic model. Some noteworthy members of the progressive left include Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Neoliberals or neolibs owe their beginning to the late Cold War era and comprise the other half of what has long been the globalist and interventionist American political establishment. While neoconservatives had their start under Reagan and emerged as a faction intent on using America's might as a superpower to win the Cold War and eradicate threats to U.S. hegemony, neoliberals first gained national prominence in the post-Cold War presidency of Bill Clinton. This faction is primarily focused upon foreign policy and is defined by the sense of America's role and responsibility as the sole global superpower to shape a free, capitalist, and democratic world, viewing the United States as an exceptional power whose prosperity and way of life must be shared with the world. Like neocons, neolibs are globalist, supportive of free markets, and tied to businesses and organizations which help facilitate the American-led global world order, including military contractors, non-government organizations, and transnational corporations. Neoliberals will prefer to approach things more diplomatically and economically than their conservative counterparts, but are more than willing to use brute force when necessary, and will pursue military interventionism to promote American geopolitical interests, as well as prop up democratic or merely friendly regimes in foreign countries. Neoliberals will generally favor socially liberal policy domestically, but like neoconservatives, are willing to bend their domestic stances to earn support on foreign policy issues deemed more pressing to their agenda. Neoliberals are commonly viewed by other left-wing factions as not truly left-wing or liberal, and at times might even be perceived by the left as right-wingers who only pay lip service to left-wing issues to perpetuate their positions of power within the establishment. Noteworthy figures of this faction include Bill Clinton, John Kerry, and Antony Blinken. Blue Dog Democrats stand as the most centrist faction of the American left-wing, and for this are often considered dinos or Democrats in name only, along with neoliberals. Blue Dogs are defined as supporting both right-leaning and left-leaning policies, generally liberal in their belief of personal freedom over government power, supportive of American labor over big business, and opposed to foreign interventionism which sets them apart from the pro-business and pro-interventionist neoliberals. Blue Dogs, like members of the old right, are strong advocates for compromise and bipartisanship in the name of passing legislation desired by the majority, and generally oppose what they see as the radical views of their own wing. While in the past Blue Dogs were characterized by more Christian and tempered socially conservative views, the faction has shifted further to the left on social issues over the years, but still remains a generally pro-compromise faction. Political polarization has brought into question the long-term survival of the Blue Dogs as a faction, with many believing the faction will ultimately fracture as the Democrat Party moves further to the left over time, with former more left-leaning Blue Dogs becoming milder progressives or social liberals, while more right-wing Blue Dogs align themselves with the old right of the Republican Party. Key figures of this faction include Joe Manchin, Charlie Crist, and Stephanie Murphy. The BIPOC or racial left is primarily defined by a concentrated focus upon minority issues and interests, as well as an anti-establishment position predicated upon the view that America in its past and present forms is institutionally racist against non-white groups. Though historically this faction has been led by and focused upon African Americans, since the civil rights movement this faction has been expanded into a larger coalition which includes the interests of indigenous peoples, Hispanics, Asians, and Pacific Islanders among others. Though with Hispanic or Latino Americans having assumed a significantly larger role given their dramatic increase as a percentage of the overall American population, having far surpassed blacks as now nearly a fifth of the country's population, albeit with their political affiliations more divided than the more devoutly democratic African American population. The divergent interests of the individual groups which comprise this coalition sometimes produce factionalism and rivalry within the BIPOC left, dividing its most active components into black, Hispanic, and Amerindian sub-factions. But as far as policy is concerned, there is a general unity in opposing what is viewed as the oppressive, white-dominated establishment. Though that being said, the faction doesn't exclude whites who support these positions, and sees notable support from and cooperation with social liberals and progressives. The racial left generally holds more conservative positions on gender roles, sexual orientation, religion, and overall social issues of equality, with racial equality typically being the sole exception. The faction does retain a more left-wing stance on economics and in some cases takes an extreme position in supporting Marxist economics or backing a redistribution of wealth from the white population to minority populations in the form of reparations and providing these groups preferential treatment and advantages in the form of affirmative action. 
The anti-establishmentarian aspect of this faction has led to question the validity of numerous institutions across the board for their allegedly racist structure, demanding they be reformed or abolished entirely. This ranges from education to employment to criminal justice, with the most prominent institutions called into question by this faction being law enforcement and immigrations and customs enforcement, both viewed as targeting minority groups for oppression. Key figures of this faction include Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, and Maxine Waters. The Green Left, though perhaps most prominently showcased by the Green Party, has a wider reach across the American left wing and is primarily driven by environmentalism and sustainability. Sharing positions of social justice, grassroots government, and non-interventionism with social liberals, while also sharing a belief in technological innovation and exploration of alternative energies with progressives and a position of global cooperation against environmental issues with the neoliberals. In recent years, the Greens have moved further to the left, seeing their social and economic views become more similar to that of other left-wing factions, and as environmentalist policies have become more integral to both progressivism and social liberalism, the distinction between the Greens and the latter faction especially are beginning to blur, potentially leaving the Greens to face a similar fate as has already occurred to prior waves of the feminist faction and the lavender left, being absorbed by larger factions as national politics shift and realign. Even the Green New Deal pioneered by this faction has become a central policy plan for the progressive faction, demonstrating that although it may fade out as a distinct group, the Green Left will have brought environmentalism a central place in left-wing politics and even a role in the next generation of right-wing politics as new writers begin demonstrating support for environmental issues in contrast to other conservative factions. Key figures of this faction include Al Gore, Jill Stein, and Ed Markey. While these might stand as the mainstream factions of the American left, just as with the American right there are more cultural, emerging, or just fringe factions of the left, which, although less visible in government, maintain a strong presence within the greater American left-wing sphere. You can find part 2 of this video over on Carson's channel in the video card here. One quick thing before you go, check out our new merchandise store and if you like the custom flags we make for some of our videos, check out our Facebook page here. The US of Z thanks you for watching, support your legion by liking the video, or join our ranks by subscribing for more. Mr. Z, out.